Okay, welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. We're still out here. We're going to fly in this freighter. I've checked hover. I'm good to go, so I want to get this guy in the air. So we got a little bit of wind. I want to make sure I got uh, recording going to get this. Got another speedboat out there. I sort of want to get this guy and take him up. You just get him up in the air. And uh, let's see, we're gonna yaw this around. I just wanna be careful. I think I hear something. I'm not sure if it's a plane or a helicopter. Just wanna make sure I can't hear over that boat. So I'm gonna kinda keep him a little bit low right now. Uh, just kinda, till I see, I don't see anything in the sky. I think I'm good. I might be just uh, another truck on the bridge. And so we're sitting out there. We got him out there. So let's uh, let's take it out there a little bit closer. We're going to edge him down this way because he's going to. We'll, we'll try to fly into his frame as we get it out there. What we'll do is we'll just fly out and track him down. This is the I think Mississauga. And uh, I believe that's a town up there in Canada, if I'm not mistaken. I've been through Mississauga a few times. I think that's what it is. The boat's name, that is. I know Mississauga is the town. And so, uh, you know, you see the wakes making the back end from the previous ship that went through. And so let's... Uh, And we're tracking this guy on the way down. Just beautiful imagery. And you hear the waves just kind of really starting to get rustled up. And I want to take him up a little bit more. I want to get some more altitude on this. And... Some strange noises coming out of that old girl today. Having problems getting a little bit of altitude. The wind is really, really kicked up. Oh, they're power washing the decks. That's what they're doing. That's why the noise. I'm hearing the power washer on the decks. Just amazing. Let me see if I can get a few more feet out of this. There we go. Because I kind of want to yaw, I want kind of want to yaw into it as it comes underneath the bridge. Because it's framed up really nice as it is. And we're just kind of watching them head down lake. We can kind of sit on this course for a little bit. Again, this configuration is working out pretty good. So what I'm doing is I'm using the audio from the screen recording instead of the hat cam now. And I'm using the Galaxy Tab 5 um, running uh, the Go app. And knock on wood so far with the OTG. And it's working pretty good. And I also do like this... Um, configuration I'm not sure if I'm showing it but the uh, configuration that I use with the extended stand uh, because it gets it up uh, closer uh, so I can really see it especially with glasses uh, because I'm using some 2.5 cheaters right now to see this still have a bit of a glare problem I need to work out I need to design something up for that or get something to, to deal with the glare problem uh, but one of the problems, though, if I get one of those shields, is getting my fat fingers in there to uh, to, to push the buttons. Yeah, he's signaling he's going down lake. I don't see another ship coming up. 
Usually they, they signal uh, each other on which side they're going to pass on, even though they have radios and everything. It's an old maritime thing, maritime, not time, time thing that, uh, that they do. And again, we're just kind of watching them drift down the lake. And uh, so pretty nice, pretty nice. Just nice views of about 117 feet or so. Have the polarizing filter on as he drifts off. So, you know, you know, over the winter, what I might do is take a compilation of these uh, freighter transits and uh, compile them up into a, to a cool hyperlapse or something. So, uh, it looks like we got another one way up lake. I don't think I'm going to make them. I'm out of battery, so uh, I think in this sequence, getting three of them, he's, he's a ways up there. So, a lot of traffic as the Mississauga drifts down the... Um, just down the way just trying to find uh, some clear air here and uh, still looking pretty good on battery life so we can let this play out a little while longer before we bring it back um, actually you know one of the things that I get a little bit confused on is I don't know if I'm showing it is the uh, the battery percentage versus the uh, the line because I'm down down to about 56 percent and I'm still reading about eight or so minutes so it's just drifting on down so but at 55 percent I still should be pretty good so And we're just letting it drift down a little bit. He's uh, he's pulling out of the frame down there. You can still see him way, way down there. Uh, it's too bad I didn't have. Too bad I only got four batteries uh, because I'd like to fly on this other one. But hey, there's always another day. So I'm dropping down around 50%. And, uh, well, he's, he's still down there a ways. We're starting to see him turn, so I'll let it go a little bit longer. Uh, yeah, because you can start to see there's a bend down there. Actually, about where he's at, we've had uh, twice since I've lived up here, freighters actually run, into, run aground there. Uh, once a Russian freighter, and I can't remember the other one. So, Because usually, uh, if they come in from the St. Lawrence Seaway, what happens is a pilot boat comes up and drops a pilot off to pilot him through the river because it can get rather narrow and kind of a little bit treacherous down there. And But the pilot boat is optional. You have to pay them. And apparently this Russian freighter decided it wasn't going to pay for the pilot and it ran aground and, you know, was a substantial amount of damage to the seawall down there. And uh, took, there was a long time for the insurance claims and everything for that to go because obviously they had to go back to Russia and everything. Uh, and then another time, I can't remember, it was another foreign vessel that ran into it. But anyways, a little bit of crash history up here. So, But uh, nothing in the past few years, knock on wood, uh, has happened. So, so I'm getting down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this guy back. I think uh, we got some pretty good footage. So I'm just going to call this guy back home. I'm going to be a little bit lazy. I'm just going to issue return to home. He's not far away at all. So we'll bring him back down and we'll call it a day because I'm not going to have a battery to fly on this other one. So, oh, I just noticed that it gives a countdown on return to home up in the corner. You know, sometimes it's hard to see and you, you know, kind of get distracted by watching it. You know, and see all the stuff on the screen, but uh, that's kind of a cool, cool feature I've never noticed before. Descending exit visual avoidance system. That must be the forward visual avoidance system that it uh, disconnects from. And we're coming on down. Coming on down. Another great day flying out on the lake. Love flying out here. This is just the greatest fun. Yeah, it's a little bit risky, you know. I've put them in the lake before. It's just kind of part of the game. 
Uh, this guy's really buffeting the wind here, so uh, I'm surprised I'm not getting a, more of a wind warning on this guy. I don't know if you can see how... Uh, I'm just going to kind of put him down on the stones. Let him land there. Let's take her down, buddy. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save the video. I wish uh, the uh, DJ, DJI Go 4 app had the same thing as Lychee that on takeoff automatically starts. So you could flick a switch for that. So anyways, another great flight on Lake Huron with the up air polarizing filter. Ah, there's the pilot boat. I'll see if I can't cut this in. So uh, this is what I was just talking about a little while ago. Um, I'll see if I can't get this in the video. But uh, that's the pilot boat. I don't know, hopefully the wind noise, uh, blocked maybe some of the wind noise from the mic. So he's going to drop a pilot off because this ship that's coming down that I mentioned I don't have a battery to fly on, he must need a pilot. So the pilot boat is gonna drop a guy off. He climbs up this rope ladder, which is, you know, it's like 60 or so feet up the side of one of those boats. He climbs up this rope ladder. Uh, I, I'm not one for heights, um, but he climbs up the rope ladder, gets on the ship, and then climbs down it down there where the pilot boat picks him up again back in Lake St. Clair. But uh, crazy stuff. Anyways, hey, that was pretty cool. Talked about it, and there it is. So anyways, let me know what you're thinking about for lunch. Cheers, and we'll see you in the next video.